in Isaiah chapter number 53 verses number 3 the Bible says uh, that he is despised and rejected of man this is Jesus Christ uh, this is the suffering this is the passion of Christ uh, he was despised uh, and rejected of man he was a man of sorrows uh, and he was acquainted with grief uh, he knew what it means to be grieving uh, and we hid as it were our faces from him uh, surely he has oh praise God he has borne our grief he has carried our grief Kenya don't grieve the world don't grieve he was wounded for our transgressions he was praised for our iniquity and the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed in the name of the Lord I declare by the stripes of our Lord Jesus Christ Africa you are healed in the name of Jesus Kenya you are healed the whole world you are healed by the stripes of one man Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary we are healed in the name of the Lord we thank God for giving us another chance to bring you the Word of God to teach you the Word of God and to bring you up to speed to the will of God concerning your life especially in the area of your health. He is so much concerned about your health and uh, his body was stricken for your sake to be healed and for my sake to be healed. And I want to take this opportunity to pray with you even before we enter to the word of God. Heavenly Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you because you sent your word and healed them and delivered them from all their destruction. Even tonight, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray that you send your word to everyone who is listening to us, who is watching, and whoever, wherever they are, I pray that the power of healing will descend upon their bodies, their spirits, and their souls, that you will completely make everyone whole in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is your will that we walk and be in perfect health. And that is what we desire to enjoy even tonight in the name of Jesus. Have your way free, the Spirit of the living God, all over the world right now. Bring healing rain upon the lives of your people in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for the power that is present in this place to heal your people. In Jesus' name, and everybody say it, amen. Thank you so much. Uh, I want to share with us tonight on a very powerful uh, and necessary understanding that will help you to not only receive but maintain your health this is critical because God doesn't just want you to be an on and off in terms of your health but he wants you to live it live in a land in a dimension where you are perfectly and permanently healthy perfectly and permanently healthy how do I enter into that dimension of life? I'll share with us tonight on the, the word I've entitled, Hear and be healed. To hear and be healed. So if I need to maintain my, to receive my healing, I need to hear the word of God. And if I need to maintain, I need to continue to hear the word of God. Because faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. The Bible says in the book of uh, Luke chapter number 5, verses number 15. Luke chapter number 5, verse number 15. This is what the scripture said. However, the report went around concerning him all the more. And great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. That is powerful. However, the report went around concerning him all the more. The report concerning Jesus Christ healing and delivering people from their oppression and from their infirmities and multitudes, great of them, came together to hear. A great multitude came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. This is when Jesus was in 
this planet, many when they heard of him, they knew that their healing has come. So they gather around him to hear the word of God and to be healed of their infirmities. Why is it necessary to hear? And why is it a foundation of our healing? Listen to this carefully. What you hear has the power to control your both physical, spiritual, and even your emotional life. Your whole being is controlled by what you hear. That is why James said in James chapter number 3 and verses number 2 and 3 that uh, when a tongue is released, what comes out of a tongue is able to control the whole body. And when we want to control the horse, we just need to bleed the tongue. What comes out of the tongue is very, very important. And it's important also to note what you hear. The book of Mark chapter number 4, verses number 24, the scriptures say, Be careful how you hear. Take heed how you hear. Because with the same measure that you measure, that will be measured, uh, will be given back unto you. So how somebody hears is very critical. And especially what you hear. Remember, words are containers of power. Words are containers of power. That is any form of word. There is what you can hear and bring discouragement. Deflate your life. There is that which you can hear and embolden your life. Give hope and bring you to a point of faith. So be careful what you hear. So the multitudes came to hear and to be healed. Any place where Jesus was teaching the word, there was power present to heal people. The word of God, wherever it is presented, wherever it is taught, wherever it is preached, it has the power to heal. The Bible says in Luke chapter 5 verse number 17, that he was teaching in one place and there gathered unto him the Pharisees, the Sadducees and multitudes who came from different towns, like in Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem, and they came to hear him. And the Bible says, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. So whenever he was teaching, it happened on a certain day as he was teaching. As he was ministering, teaching them the word of God. That's why we have healing school. As he was teaching them, and remember what they were hearing was concerning healing. As he was teaching that there were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by who had come out of every town of Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem. And the scripture says, and the power of God was present to heal them. Anytime you hear the word of God, the word of God contains the power of God that brings healing unto your body. Whatever you hear has the power to change the configuration of your body system. Life is governed by words. Life is governed by words. For your healing to appear, you need to hear teachings or information about your well-being, good news about your health. And that is why it is important to hear Psalm 107 verse number 20. The scripture said that he sent his word he sent his word and healed them. He sent his word. So when the word of God is sent, when you hear the word of God, it brings healing. It brings healing into your spirit, both to your mind, to your body, and to your spirit. So he sent his word and healed them. The word was only sent when they hear it. Because when you hear, you receive faith. When you hear the word of God, you receive faith. Many people want to be healed, but there is an element in man that does not want to hear the word of God. 
They don't want to hear, but they still want to be healed. It doesn't work, work that way, ladies and gentlemen. For you to have divine healing, you need to hear the word of God because that is the medicine of divine healing. Even when you go to the doctor, the doctor will tell you something. What you hear from the doctor will either stir your faith and hope or it will deflate you. It will bring you to a place of discouragement concerning your situation. Even the, the doctor will tell you what to do. And the moment you embark in doing it, then you will have your health restored. So what do you hear? What do you hear? What you hear is able to stir up faith. Many people who got healed, they heard about Jesus. They heard about what Christ is able to do. Like the woman with the issue of blood, the scripture said, when she had heard about Jesus, that is the moment she took a step to come behind the press and touch the hem of the garment. Because I believe words trigger response. When words are spoken, the whole being is moved to that direction of those words. Words are power containers. They are able to move your whole system. When she heard that there is a God who heals, when she heard that if you touch the hem of his garment, his wing carries the healing power, that woman was moved to say, hey, I want to get my health back. And she was ready to move behind the press against the laws that were established in that time that no bleeding woman should mingle with people. But she went behind the press and touched the hem. She must have had the book of Malachi where the scripture say that he would arise with healing in his wings. And she knew exactly where to go and touch. So what you hear has the power to transform or to move your whole body in that direction. Hallelujah. Why do we need to hear the word of God? The Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter number 12, verses, chapter number 4, verse number 12, Hebrews 4, verses number 12. The scripture said, for the word of God is living. When you hear the word, it is alive. It is living and powerful. It's alive, it carries power, and it is sharper. That means that it can penetrate. It can enter any system and bring the results of why it was sent. Remember, the word of God is living, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. The scripture say it is able to pines even to the division of the soul and the spirit. These are two inseparable, naturally inseparable elements, the soul and the spirit. But the word is able to enter there. And the scripture say, and the joints and the marrow. That is how quick the word can be. The moment you hear, the power in the word is able to move with super speed and handle that which needs to be handled. There are people like the, uh, the centurion who came to Jesus and these guys asked Jesus to heal their servants. And Jesus said, go and according to your faith, your servant is healed. When the centurion and these people went to inquire when the healing started, the scripture said the very hour that Jesus, the master, spoke the word. It is important to hear. To hear that he was wounded for your infirmities. He was bruised, praise the name of the Lord, for our infirmities, for our sicknesses. He was wounded for our healing by his tribes who were healed. He took away our infirmities, carried our diseases, what you hear has power to transform your life, ladies and gentlemen. So what are you hearing? Are you hearing the word of God which is quick, sharper, powerful, and living, that is able to penetrate to every area of your life and secure for you healing? Listen to this carefully. The word of God is medicine to every man's flesh. 
The scriptures say in the book of Proverbs chapter number 4, verses number 22, that when you find the word, it is medicine to all your flesh. Hallelujah. That is medicine. The scripture says, for they are life to them who find them and health unto all their flesh. That is what the word of God is. It is a medicine for you, brothers and sisters. So what do I need to do in order for me to secure my healing? Is to hear. And what I need to hear is the word. Allow me to use uh, the context of Proverbs chapter 4 verse number 20 down to verse number 22. In the area of application of how we can receive and maintain our hearing, our, our healing through hearing. Listen to what the Bible says. My son, attend to my words. Attend to my words. Incline your ear unto my sayings. This is the wisest man encouraging and advising us who are in this world at such a time like this. When people are trying to find, uh, to put their attention on vaccines, they're trying to put their attention on some medication. But there is a divine superior form of healing that is less costly. It only costs you faith and attention. Attend to my words and climb thine ear unto my sayings. The next verse, verse number 21. Let them not depart from thine eyes. I will be measuring on this. Why the word should not depart from your eyes. And keep them in the midst of your heart. Keep them. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Why? Verse number 22. For they are life unto them and to those that find them and health unto all their flesh. Glory to God. Take the word of God. Swallow it as medicine. Praise the name of the Lord. According to the prescription given in this scripture, swallow it. Let it not just be on the table, but take it in. Glory to God. Listen to this carefully. If you go to a doctor, and you have a condition because I think you need to understand the natural dimension so that you may understand the realm of the spirit. If today I have a problem with headache and I go to a doctor and I tell a doctor, my head has been aching throughout the night. One of the things the doctor will do, he will just do his own prescription. Give me some tablets or an injection. Let's say he gives me a tablet, some medicine and packs them for me and says, okay, look at what I've written on this. Go do according to what is written on this, on this small sheet. So I go and read, probably it is written, I need to take two tablets, uh, two tablets times probably one or two per day. And then if I desire to have my health restored, I will follow the instruction of the doctor. But for me, being wiser, I take the tablets, I put them beside my bed. And I say, I have the tablets here. I'm going to be healed and restored. And then my condition continues to be worse. But yet I have the tablets here. And what is the problem with me? The problem with me is that I'm not ready to follow the prescription. I'm not ready to follow what the doctor has written concerning how I need to restore my health in the natural way. So if the doctor has given me medicine, I need to follow the instruction for me to get into my restored health. The same way it is with the word of God. The word of God is divine medicine. Listen to this carefully. The word of God is divine medicine. That is why you need to get it into your belly. Probably I need to take the tablets, swallow them with water. They go into my belly. Within the belly, they will dissolve and go into the system to deal with the, where the problem was. But now in the belly of my spirit, my heart, where I need to take the word, I hear the word not only just to hear, but to do the next thing is to meditate on that word, to continue thinking, to continue speaking under my breath what the scripture says. 
If today I'm having headache and I've had a scripture like the Bible says in Matthew chapter number 8, verses number 17. I hear this word, Matthew 8, verses number 17, where the scripture says that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, He himself took my infirmities and bore my sicknesses. He himself took my infirmities and bore our sicknesses. So what I need to do is that once I've heard that, I've attended myself to that, I need to continue thinking and to take the word out of him that God through Jesus Christ himself took away my infirmities. So I don't have these infirmities. Hallelujah. I don't have them. I don't have these infirmities. I meditate on that, that he took my infirmities, carried or bare my sicknesses. The moment I meditate on that word, that word has the ability to become part of my flesh. Has the ability to become part of me. And the moment it becomes bad of me, then from there I will have been healed. I will have been healed already. Because the construction of that sentence is in the past tense. He says, he himself took. When we're talking about took and I'm meditating about he took it, not will take. He took our infirmity. He, it is something that is already done. So the moment I'm aligning myself to the word of God, that infirmity which is in me, the medicine that I've taken, I'm meditating on, will dissolve and dismantle the pain or the sickness that is in my body. So it's important to hear and take in, meditate, and it will dissolve, dismantle the sickness in my system. Praise be to God. Let me give you a practical example from the scripture we have read of uh, Proverbs 4. How to maintain and how to receive and maintain. Listen, number one, we are told in verses number 20 that attend to my words. Attend to my words means prioritize the word of God. Suppose today I was moving to town and uh, I find my friend somewhere and that friend, I tell him, friend, I need to talk to you. And he says, hey, please, sorry, my friend. I need to attend to something else. Please give me some few minutes. This person is not that he hates me. It is because there is something more urgent that cannot wait. He had to attend to before he attends to me who just met him immediately. Listen to me carefully. When we receive the word, we must give it priority. So many people do not give the word priority when they are sick. The priority they give is, how do I get healed? What medication do I need to go for? Which doctor do I need to call? Ladies and gentlemen, many people have been frustrated, disappointed, because they did not prioritize the word of God. You hear the woman with the issue of blood, she went to different types of doctors. And she was frustrated because her situation did not become better. But the day she heard about Jesus Christ, that is the day she came and received her healing. What if she could have given the word of God priority? What if she could have sought out Jesus earlier? She could not have lost the money. Praise the name of the Lord. Many people have sold properties. Many families have been left in abject poverty because a sickness came into the compound and took every wealth that was present. Because there was no priority in that family to number one, attend the word of God. Listen to me carefully. The word was sent for our help. The scripture said, come by without money. It has been given freely. Healing has been paid for. Jesus paid for healing for everyone. For everyone. Even people who are not the Jews, when they approach Jesus for healing, he healed them according to their faith because they knew that he will heal them. So, healing has been made available. We need to come to that place. We attend and prioritize the word of God. Give it preeminence. The word of God was there from the beginning. It is the word that was created, that created you. 
Praise the name of the Lord. It is the word that created you. So when you need healing, the first attention you need to give is to the word of God. What does God say concerning this situation? Because God is saying something. Remember, there are people in the Old Testament who used to go to the prophet to ask them, what is God saying concerning my sickness? Will I get healed or will I die? Praise be to God. Isaiah was sent to Ezekiah when he was sick and the sickness was so severe. And Isaiah was told, hey man, prepare, you're going, you're going to die, you're not going to get healed. The man turned to the Lord and said, God, I know you are my priority. He did not go to the understanding of his mind and say, hey, I need to protect myself. I need to take A, A and B precautions. No. He attended to the word of God. Prioritize the word. Trying to be so wise in your own understanding will bring you to a place of frustration. That's why it's important to give attention to the word. The scripture says in 1 Peter 2 verse number 2 that we desire the word of God as uh, little children because that word causes us to grow in knowledge. As newborn babies desire the sincere milk of the word. That is what we need. That we may grow thereby. God desires to help us to grow. Jesus said to the devil in Matthew chapter number 4 verses number 4 that a man shall not live by blood alone. Your life is not complete without the word of God. You cannot live healthy without the word. Give the word of God priority. But the more important aspect is man shall not live on bread alone. Give attention to the word. Keep hearing the word in the morning, during the day, break time, during lunch, during the noon time. Get the word every time. This word has the ability to give you health and to help you maintain. Number two, the scripture say, incline your ear unto my sayings. Many people, listen to me carefully, do not want to incline. This word incline means let the word take preeminence. Don't try to understand it. Just consume it. Believe it. Incline your ear hear unto my saying. Don't try to understand. Just believe the word. If God says that uh, uh, you lay your hand on the sick and they receive healing, and you have heard that word, in the natural, it doesn't make sense. But if you believe it, praise God, it is able to produce what it says. Isaiah 55 verse number 11 the scripture says as the water as the rain comes down and the dew it does not go back uh, without making a revelation or without making what it was sent for come to pass so shall my word that goes forth out of my mouth it shall not return it shall not return unto me void but it shall accomplish what I please and it shall prosper to that thing so when you believe the word of God, not trying to get it explained, it will produce faith and faith is the only avenue through which you receive the divine healing. Praise God. Receive faith through inclining your, your ears to the word of God. Receive faith. So as you incline, you receive faith. The word of God produces faith and faith is the secret to your healing. Let me show you something in Matthew chapter number 8, uh, verses number 13. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in the selfsame hour. So this man was there looking for the healing of his servant. And the moment Jesus spoke to that man, he told him that go as you have believed. This man said, hey, I am a man in authority. I don't want you to come under my roof. Just speak, send the word and my servant will be healed. Jesus said, go as you have believed. So the man inclined his ear to hear or to believe what Jesus will say. And that is the same thing.
Singependa Singe penda kufunga kipindi hiki bila kukupatia nafasi ya kupokea uzima ya kupokea maisha mapya ya kupokea Kristo Yesu kuwa bwana na mokozo maisha yako Biblia inasema katika Yohana 1:12 ya kwamba alikuja kwa wale ambao walikuwa wake lakini walio wake hawakumpokea lakini wote waliompokea aliwapa uweza wa kufanyika wana wa Mungu nawe pia una nafasi hii ya kuweza kufanyika mwana wa Mungu na kwa sababu hiyo ninakuuliza tu umwamini Kristo Yesu uamini kazi njema aliyofanya katika ule msalaba wa Calvary kwa niaba yako alisifia dhambi zako na zangu na akapigwa tukaweza kupokea uponyaji na akasema njoni kwangu yenye nyote mmelemewa na mzigo mzito nami nitawapatia pumziko wokovu ni kipawa cha Mungu ni kwamba alifanya kazi yote ili wewe upate kipawa hichi anasema atakaye muamini ya kwamba Kristo Yesu alikuja na akafa kwa ajili ya dhambi za wanadamu na mkiri Kristo kuwa bwana wa moyo wake ataokolewa ataingia na atatoka na atapata malisho nataka ukupate nafasi hii sema bwana Yesu ninakupokea leo kuwa bwana na mokozi wa maisha yangu ninaamini moyoni mwangu kwamba Mungu alikufufua kutoka kwa wapo na ninakukiri dakika hii kwamba wewe Kristo Yesu ni bwana na mokozi wa maisha yangu amen ninakuombea ya kwamba Mungu akusaidie na akupe neema akutimizie haja za moyo wako na zaidi ya hayo akuelekeze kwa kanisa ambalo litaweza kukufundisha na kukuinua kiroho na hilo neno utakalolipata likupatie urithi katikati ya wale Mungu amewatakasa kwa neno lake na kwa damu yake Mungu akubariki tuonane katika kipindi kingine kichacho majaliwa ya Kristo Yesu